Alright, it's time. I'm finally gonna reveal my secret to achieving amazing color grades in Premiere Pro. Now, before we start color grading, you want your monitor to be calibrated. There you go, I, I just told you my secret. And that was it. But Timon, why is this so important to calibrate your monitor? Well, let's say you color graded your video on an uncalibrated monitor. It looks great for your eyes, but once you open it on another screen, the color grade looks entirely different. That is because settings like brightness, contrast and whatnot change more often than you think. That is exactly why calibrating your monitors is a must. You can look at it like a guitarist who has to tune his guitar before he plays a song for his audience. If your monitor is calibrated, your videos are gonna look the same on all devices and if not it's gonna look like this and come on nobody wants that but now here comes the how to calibrate your screen to do that i'm actually using the data color spider x2 which is a small calibration device it's a simple tool that you plug into your computer and then it will work together with the spider utility to calibrate your screen oh and data color is also sponsoring this video Thank you so much. Now, let me show you how easy it actually is. First, you're gonna make sure your Spider X2 is connected to your computer. Then open up the utility software. Once it's open, click on Calibrate My Display, since that's what we're going to do. Click on Next. In here, choose Display Calibration. You can also choose Studio Match to match multiple monitors or do a display analysis. Click Next again, and now you can choose which display you want to calibrate. Then simply choose your display type. Then choose a technology, which for me is white LED. Then on the right, select all the controls that are available available for your monitor. Click on next again and in here, make sure the calibration type is set to full cal. Then check your basic settings and go to the next step. And now it's time to put your spider onto the screen. To do that, simply open it up and put it on your screen like this. Then all you need to do is start the calibration process and wait until it's done. Amazing, now you can save this calibration profile so that it loads up every time you boot up your computer. You can also set a reminder to recalibrate your display, but you can do it like me before every project. And that's all to it. I have tested it on five different monitors, including an older MacBook Pro. And I gotta say, once you learn how to work with this, you don't want to go back. And now that your monitors are calibrated, we're going to do some color correction. Right here in the timeline, you can see an interview. Now, these two shots are made with two different cameras. Different cameras have a different color interpretation, which is why both shots look a little different. As you can see, the second shot has less contrast and looks more flat. Also, the skin tones look very magenta. To fix that, we're going to match the light and colors from the second shot with the first one. That way, both shots look like they came from the same camera. To do that, we're going to first set the white balance balance, then match the contrast and lightning, and after that we're gonna match the colors. To help me out with this, I used the Data Color Spider Checker video. All you need to do is hold it up next to your subject on both cameras. Now, to set the white balance, let's find a frame where I'm holding the gray card. Once you've found it, go to the window menu on top and open up Lumetri Color. Once it's open, head over to Basic Correction, then click the color picker and go to the program monitor. Now, simply click on the gray card and Premiere will automatically fix the white balance in your video. Of course, Premiere can always be a little off so there's nothing wrong with manually adjusting it. Now in the timeline go to the second clip where the other person is holding the card. Then go back to the metric color and again grab the white balance selector. In the program monitor click the gray card again and as you can see that already fixed some of the magenta skin tones. So now that the white balance is set we're gonna match the light and contrast. To do that we're gonna need the Lumetri scopes. Go to the window menu on top and find the Lumetri scopes. Once it's open you can actually drag your windows to wherever you want. You know make yourself a comfortable work space. Now in the scopes, right click it and make sure the Luma waveform is selected. You can close any other scope that might be open. Now in this scope we can basically see everything from the deepest blacks on the bottom to the absolute whites on the top. The waves you see in here is representing what Premiere is showing you in the program monitor. Now to match the light, go to the first shot where the person is holding up the gray gradient scale. This actually shows the whites, black and everything in between. We only want to see this part in our Lumetri scope so to do that we're gonna create a mask around it. Make sure to click is selected and then go to the effect controls. Find the opacity property. Then click the pen tool to create a mask. In the program monitor, simply drag a box around your grayscale. And there you go. In the LumaScope, you can now only see the grayscale just like we can see in the program monitor. Now we gotta do the same thing on the second clip so that we can match both the grayscales. Again, go to your second clip and make sure it's selected. Then go to the effect controls and click on the pen tool. Again, in the program monitor, draw a box around the grayscale card and now we have it selected on 
both the clips. Now we gotta find a way to see both of the clips at the same time so that we can match them. To do that we're gonna enable comparison view. You will find it back in the program monitor when you click on the button editor. Once you've found it, drag it next to the other toggles. Then click on OK. There you go. Now when you enable it, you will see your video from the timeline on the right. Then on the left, you will see a reference clip. Using the timeline on the bottom, you can select a frame of your first video. Find the grayscale of the first clip so that you have both of them in the program monitor. You can also change the view to horizontal view or vertical view. In this case, vertical view works best. And there you go. Now in the Lumetri scopes, you can see both videos perfectly next to each other, which makes it super easy to match them. To do that, make sure the second clip that we're gonna match is selected. Then go to Lumetri color and find the basic correction tab. Scroll down until you find the light settings. Now carefully look at the Luma scope and start adjusting these controls. Let's start with the exposure and add more light to the video. Increase the contrast so that we can use the range a little more. Then play around with the highlights, shadows, whites and blacks until both the curves in the Luma scope look similar. There you go. Now let's take a look at our clips. To do that, find your first clip and go to the effect controls. Then find opacity and simply disable it for a second. That will hide your mask. Do the same thing for your second clip and as you can see, the light is matched perfectly. Alright, it's time to match the colors in your video as well, starting with the skin tones. To do that, disable comparison view for a second. Then make sure the first clip is selected and go to the effect controls. Then find opacity and enable the effect again. Select the mask we've created earlier and go to the program monitor and move it down so that the color card becomes visible. Then do the same thing on the second clip. Now when you enable comparison view again, you will see both the color cards. We're gonna match the colors of the second video with the one of the reference clip. For this, we're gonna use the HSL color. So select your video and go to Lumetri color. Then find the HSL tab. First, we're gonna select the skin tones of our clip and to do that, click the color picker and go to the program monitor. Then click on one of the skin tones on your color card. Now go back to your selection and adjust it by dragging these levers. Make sure the skin tones are all visible on your card. When you're done, enable the color gray so that you can only see the skin tones. Then do the exact same thing on the second clip. Now go back to Lumetri scopes and right click it. Then find the vector scope and open it up. Now we can actually see the skin tones of both your videos on this graph. The vector scope is actually really simple. The graph you can see on it leans towards one of these colors. The longer the graph is, the more saturated it is. So to match them, make sure your clip is selected and go to Lumetri color. Back in HSL, we're gonna adjust this selection. So scroll down a little to the correction settings and here we're gonna use this color wheel to match the skin tones. In the color wheel, click and drag to push in a certain color in your video. In the vector scope, you can see the colors of your video shifting away. The part of the graph that isn't moving is your first video. So we want the second video to match with the first one. To do that, push a little of the color needed into the direction of that graph. And there you go. Now if you scroll down a little, you can also use these sliders to further tweak the settings. Then when that's done, use the saturation slider to match the graph even better. And there you go, the skin tones are already on point. Next you can disable the color gray when you're done on both your videos. Also make sure to disable the opacity effect to hide the mask for a second so that you can check if the skin tones actually look great. When that's done, we're gonna move on by matching the other colors as well. To do that, we're gonna use the Lumetri curves. First, make sure your second clip is selected and go to Lumetri color. Find Lumetri curves and go to hue via saturation curves. Right here we can see the colors and we can boost up the saturation or decrease it. Oh, and if you double click, it will reset the curve. Before we adjust it, we're gonna make a selection. To do that, click the color picker and go to your second clip in the program monitor. Click the first color on your color card, which is magenta. Now in the hue versus saturation curve, that color will be selected. You can grab the middle point and drag it up to increase the saturation of the color magenta or decrease it if it's needed. Look at the vector scope very carefully and match the color magenta with the one from the other clip by making it the same length as the other one. Now that we've matched the saturation, we're gonna make sure that the magenta in our second video is the same as in the first one. To do that, we need to adjust the hue. Luckily, underneath the hue via saturation curve, we have a hue versus hue curve. Again, click the color picker and in the program monitor, select magenta of the second clip. Then back in the curve, drag the middle point up or down to adjust the color. Again, look in the vector scope and make sure the graph lays beautifully on top of the first one. When that's done, go back to the hue saturation curve and click the color picker again. Now in the program monitor, click the color blue. Then adjust the saturation of your selection and again go to the hue versus hue curve. Now again with the color picker, select the color blue and back in the curve, adjust the hue a little bit to match it up again. Now keep doing that for every color and once you're done, your curves will look like this and both your clips will look like they came from the exact same camera. Congratulations, but it's important to mention that there are 
plugins that can do this in just a few clicks. However, I'll keep that for another video because I think this is a great color correction exercise. All right, now a quick recap on matching both videos. First thing we do is fix the white balance, then the lighting and contrast, and after that we're matching the colors. It might look overwhelming at first, but believe me, after doing this once or twice, you'll get the hang of it. Next, I want to show you how to make your videos look like your favorite movies in the video right here on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, stay creative.